Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Operating from aircraft carriers presents unique challenges and demands precise coordination and skill. For instance, one of the most effective aircraft for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions, the F-A-18, can be operated from an aircraft carrier. However, launching and recovering it on the flight deck is not an easy task. Extremely skilled pilots and deck crews use catapults to launch the F-A-18 and utilize arresting wires to recover it swiftly on the carrier's flight deck. Similarly, the E-2D Hawkeye, an airborne early warning and control aircraft, was launched and recovered in a similar fashion to F-A-18. Alongside these fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters like the AH-64 Apache take off and land vertically on the flight deck. There is not enough space for all of the aircraft to be stationed on the flight deck of the aircraft carrier, which is why the U.S. Navy developed a unique elevator system, which vertically transports aircraft from the hangar bay to the flight deck and vice versa. The elevator system features a hydraulic engine, which converts hydraulic pressure into the force necessary to lift the elevator. These aluminum hydraulic elevators are big and powerful enough to lift two fighter jets, as well as other massive equipment. After moving the aircraft using an elevator, the airmen utilize a pushback truck to move the plane to the desired location on the flight deck or in the hangar bay. A pushback truck has a low configuration, which helps in improving the steering ability. Moreover, the pushback trucks have a unique chassis configuration, which keeps their center of gravity close to the ground. The pushback trucks have a specialized towing hook, which is attached to the nose landing gear of the aircraft to drag it from one place to another. F-35C jets are considered one of the most effective aircraft at sea. Hence, they are launched almost every time an aircraft carrier conducts an attack mission. The F-35C is a single-engine, single-seat stealth multi-role combat aircraft designed for air superiority and strike missions. It's a true engineering marvel, which features electronic warfare, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. The F-35C has a different design as compared to the other models of the F-35 aircraft. It's the largest and the heaviest of the three F-35 variants. The 
The F-35C has a larger wing area, strong landing gear, and an exceptional internal structure to withstand the stresses of an aircraft carrier's operations. One of its striking features is its wingspan, which is 33.5 feet when fully extended. This allows the aircraft to generate significant lift, making it capable of carrying a substantial payload and achieving impressive combat range. Launching an F-35C from an aircraft carrier using catapults requires the airmen to perform a chain of actions. They need to inspect the landing gear and the body thoroughly to find any deformities or cracks in the airframe. The fuel level of the aircraft is also checked. If necessary, the airmen refuel the aircraft to ensure its tank is full. Once the airmen are satisfied that the plane is ready to take off, the pilot jumps into the cockpit and verifies whether or not every system is in working order. Now for takeoff, the F-35 is positioned on the deck. A blast shield known as a jet deflector is raised behind the aircraft and the nose gear is affixed to the catapult. As soon as the launch is initiated, the catapult steam piston helps launch the aircraft forward at speeds of around 165 miles per hour. The catapult assist, along with the thrust of the engine, is enough to get the F-35 launched from the aircraft carrier. On the other hand, the F-35 requires hydraulically powered cables to land smoothly on an aircraft carrier. The pilot deploys a special hook located at the rear end of the aircraft, which catches the cables above the deck. These arresting cables pull the aircraft backward, which allows it to stop immediately. Although the pilots flying these planes are very skillful at what they do, most of the credit for these assisted takeoffs and landings goes to the talented flight deck crews. The catapult that launches the aircraft is monitored from the flight deck's integrated catapult control station, also known as the bubble. The flight deck crew and the crew inside the bubble communicate during each aircraft launch. The bubble monitored the winds and provided the necessary information for the launch of the aircraft. Different sections of the aircraft carrier like the flight deck, the weapons magazine and the hangar are interconnected by a few hydraulic lifts. Aircraft not needed on the flight deck are secured in the hangar bay, along with the other aircraft that require maintenance. The hangar bay is a storage structure located two decks below the flight deck. It's 34 meters wide, 8 meters high, and 209 meters long, which is almost two-thirds the length of the entire ship.
Not only is the hangar bay sufficient for conducting maintenance of multiple aircraft at a time, but it's also used to store spare jet engines, fuel tanks, and other heavy equipment. The hangar bay has several specialties, such as the weapons elevator, along with other smaller lift systems. The weapon elevator removes missiles and bombs from the weapons magazine and moves them to the bay and the flight deck. These weapons are then collected and loaded on the aircraft before launch. These elevators are usually located right behind the launch area allowing the airmen to load the planes with ammunition as quickly as possible. Aircraft carriers deployed on international waters should always be ready to deploy munitions at a moment's notice. The weapons magazine, also known as the bomb assembly room, is vital for such a rapid response. Specially trained sailors, known as ordnance handlers, use different types of tools to make a standard size bomb. These sailors are well trained in manufacturing and assembling different types of bombs. The hangar bay also serves as a garage, where scheduled inspections and maintenance are carried out. Moreover, it includes a weld and repair shop, where technicians undertake critical metalwork and fabrication jobs. The technicians here can handle anything, from repairing damaged ship components to manufacturing pieces needed urgently for operations. Another vital component of the aircraft carrier is the tire shop, where maintenance teams maintain and repair aircraft tires. The tire shop is equipped with machinery for tire examination, inflation, and replacement. The maintenance teams monitor tires thoroughly and check for wear and tear. If any discrepancy is found, the tires are either repaired or replaced. Maintaining tires is one thing, but what if I told you that even engines can be repaired on an aircraft carrier? The jet shop on the aircraft carrier has a specified propulsion repair zone where gas turbine engines are disassembled, inspected, and reassembled. When an engine is brought into the repair shop, Skilled technicians perform an induction check for signs of damage or wear. This first test indicates the parts that need to be ordered, which then initiates the reassembly process. The technicians carefully put the engine back together following strict rules. After the reassembly, the engine undergoes an important step called operating verification. It's put through many tests to ensure it's ready to be used again, and then it is sent back to its squadron. The operational success of the F-35C aircraft on aircraft carriers depends not only on its advanced technology, but also on the dedication and expertise of the flight deck crew.
From transporting the jet to the flight deck to providing insights to the pilot till takeoff, the flight deck crew plays a vital role in effective and safe flight operations on ships. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.